glamorous on American Idol, so it's a little, a little more nerve-wracking when you're actually up here. Uh, my name is Kate Andriotla, and I am talking to you today as a mother, a daughter, a sister, an aunt, and a friend. And today marks day 40 as a breast cancer survivor. That has a very lovely ring to it. It was a long path to get there. Really quick, I just wanted to let you know how I met MAMA because it's six degrees of MAMA Carmo. Uh, <laughs> I work at George Mason University and in 2009 was working in alumni affairs when I heard about a wonderful alumna and her remarkable story of beating breast cancer and starting the Tiger Lily Foundation. So I tracked her down, had her come speak to some students and was just incredibly moved by her story and found myself asking what would I do if I were her. I was also a single mom to a beautiful little girl and could not imagine. So flash forward to this year when I found a lump doing a self-exam at home the night before my daughter turned five. I didn't think much of it, but I thought, what should I do? I called my mom, who told me to call the doctor. <laughs> After many appointments, my biopsy was on February 14th. What a way to spend Valentine's Day. And I joked with my friends, I said, I had three people go to second base with me on Valentine's Day, and that is a personal best in my book, so. Uh, but three days later, on February 17th, I got the call that everybody dreads getting where my doctor very quietly told me it's not benign. At that point, my world kind of went crazy. Ironically, the next day, I was on Route 28, crying, and I look over and I see a car with a license plate that says Tiger Lily. As I get up closer and look to my right, through my tears, it's Mama, laughing, smiling, I think on her phone. <laughs> Not to out her, but she was happy. And I said to myself, you know what? This is a sign from my grandmother, who I lost to breast cancer, that this is gonna be a rough road, but you will be like her. You will be laughing, smiling, and surviving. So to show you how hard she works, I emailed her. Creeper, I said, I saw you on the road the other day. I have breast cancer now. And <laughs> She wrote me back at 1.35 in the morning and her email moved me. It was, it read like words to an Adele song. They were beautiful, they made me cry, and they gave me strength. And she has been with me all through this journey. She doesn't sleep. And after you go through this, your doctors tell you to get like nine hours of sleep a night, which is just impossible, so. <laughs> But when I was first diagnosed, somebody I, I really have a lot of respect for told me, cancer won the battle, now you go win the war. And her words really stuck with me. And I thought about it, and if you look back in history, no war has ever been won by one person alone. You need an army, an army of people that will fight for you, will fight with you, and do so unconditionally to make you a survivor. So I looked up survivor in the dictionary to see how they would define it. And they say it's a person who continues to function or prosper in spite of opposition, hardship, or setbacks. And I would add to that that a survivor discovers truths as a result of opposition, hardship, or setbacks. And they use those truths to survive. So in closing, I have three truths I wanted to share with you. One, be your own advocate and know your body. My mom saved my life. She taught me at a very young age to know my body and to be an advocate for my health. And after everything we've been through, she deserves honorary degrees in counseling, nursing, and transportation for all the miles we logged going to and from doctor's appointments. Number two, find that person or those people that will be your rock. And for me, that was my dad who's on his knees taking pictures. <laughs> There's a commercial right now for Subaru where a dad's leaning through the passenger side of a window talking to a little girl with pigtails who's behind the wheel. Come to find out she's really a teenager, probably going out for her first time driving alone. But he sees her as his little girl. That's my dad. He has had to hear about breasts, ovaries, and every girl part imaginable, and he has not flinched. So find your rock. Last. <laughs> and be there for other people. Like I said, it takes an army, but words and kindness are free and very powerful, and they make the dark days a little bit brighter. 
I have some really beautiful scars. I have two four inch symbols that I'm fearless and I am a fighter. My breasts don't define me. My new short hair does not define me. It will grow back. What defines me are the people like you that surround me with love and help me get through this. And now my chance to give back to you. So thank you for being here to support the Tiger Lily Foundation today. By being here, you are supporting a group of survivors in training, as I like to call them. You're helping someone's daughter who this weekend will find a lump. A kindergartner's mom who just got the call and someone's sister is fighting the fatigue of chemo. You are giving them a chance to get back to normal. So today I have one challenge before you before I say goodbye. Do not walk or run as an individual, but walk and run as an army, because as an army, we can all help someone win this war. Thank you.